everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis of FanDuel, who's here to help me break down the undervalued players as we look forward to DFS during week six. What's happening, Jim? All good, Greg. Trying to get over the Twins sweep at the hand, hands of the Yankees. I am wearing my Twins shirt beneath my number fire hoodie, so uh, still clinging to that. Uh, I am happy that I happy that I emotionally detached early, though. So uh, still okay. How are you doing? I tried to tell you last week, and you rightfully so had a loser's mentality. No surprise, your team lost. So <laughs> I'm doing great. Looking forward to rooting on the Rays tonight in hopes that the Yankees will have game uh, will have home field advantage the rest of the playoffs. That would be ideal. Yeah, absolutely. I think that uh, I prefer the Rays or the Astros here because I drew it against the Yankees uh, for the rest of my life. I think that's just kind of the the burden of a Twins fan. So let's go, Garrett Cole. Rock and roll tonight. May this be Garrett Cole's last start in an Astro as next year he joins my beloved evil empire. <laughs> let's begin this weekend talking about DFS and talking about some of the undervalued players. We begin with the New York Jets quarterback Sam Darnold, who's back, baby. Your quarterback only took six weeks to return from mono. Finally. Yeah, the Jets needed this guy as soon as he could get back out there. He is back out there this week. And I think we could talk about guys like Josh Rosen and like Case Keenum. They're pretty viable in that game down in Miami. But I think it's also okay to go with the cheap quarterback who is in the best situation. And that is Sam Darnold, surrounded by some decent talent with this Jets team, squaring off with the Cowboys. And I kind of like this game to be a potential sneaky shootout here. Pat Thorman on, of Establish the Run was noting in his weekly column that the Jets in week one with Darnold out there ran no huddle 14% of the time. And the Cowboys this year run do, have done so at a top five rate at 12%. Again, according to Pat Thorman of Establish the Run, which means this game could have some good play volume, which is good for passing offenses. This Cowboys Cowboys pass defense, been just kind of okay this year. They haven't been terrible, but certainly not great. They've got decent personnel, but I think this Jets team does too. You got Robbie Anderson, Jameson Crowder, Le'Veon Bell. That's a pretty good formula for putting up some points. So I think that Donald at $6,800 or 67 makes sense. He is not a cash game play for me. I'd rather spend up for guys like Kyler Murray and Matt Ryan in cash games. But for tournaments, I really don't mind some Sam Darnold in his return from Mono. So hopefully he's fully healthy and we'll see if he can let her rip this weekend. But I think this is a good, good game to stack overall, which should go under the radar. Good price you're getting for Sam Darnold. And I think all these weapons, quote unquote, are under the radar for the Jets this week. We haven't seen this team with their quarterback since week one. I think Jameson Crowder's in a good spot. I think Robbie Anderson's in a good spot. Even potentially Demarius Thomas as well. The Jets are going to get right here this week. And that's all thanks to their QB returning. And that's Sam Darnold. Let's move on to some undervalued running backs, Jim. And that brings us to the Chiefs' Damien Williams, who's averaged uh, yards per carry not so great thus far this year, but he's seeing the majority, strong majority, of the work in that Chiefs backfield. Why do you think he bounces back this week? Yeah, personally, I don't really care too much about rushing yardage for running backs. I want guys who get work in the passing game and guys who get high leverage targets in the passing game. And that's exactly what Damian Williams will get with this Chiefs offense. We talk a lot about how innovative the Chiefs offense is, and we talk about their route concepts and stuff like that. But we don't give enough praise for how they use their running backs. I think they and probably the Chargers are the two best teams in utilizing their running backs in a smart way out of the backfield. And the biggest benefactor there is Damian Williams. When he came back from that injury on Sunday night, he actually he actually had an end zone target, almost hauled it in for a decently long touchdown. He has had six, five, and four targets in his three healthy games so far this year. And he also had nine rush attempts back in week five, his first game back. So I like the role there for Damian Williams. And I just generally want pass catching backs in this Chiefs offense. We also saw Andy Reid criticize LaShawn McCoy's pass protection and I think that could lead to an expanded snap rate for Williams this week. He played 56% of the snaps last week. That could potentially go up here against this Texans defense. And the Texans haven't been very good against pass catching backs, partly because they face guys like Christian McCaffrey and like Alvin Kamara. That's certainly something that, you know, we should keep in mind. But Damian Williams is used in a smart way. He is a good pass catching back, and he has $6,600. He's in the same range as guys like Le'Veon Bell and like David Johnson. And I want those guys for cash games, and I want them in tournaments too. But I think that Williams at $6,600 makes sense as well. So Damian Williams gets used in a really smart way, which gives him good upside. I think it makes sense to get cheap exposure to this really fun game at $6,600. $6,600, a cheapish way to get involved with the Chiefs. We talk about it all the time. That you want as many Chiefs as you can into your lineups just because this high-scoring offense rarely lets you down. Last week, more of an aberration. Damien Williams, as we get more comfortable with him getting back in the lineup, 
he's going to go off at some point. Hopefully for us, it's this week. Another running back, Jim, that you're looking at here this week is Kenny and Drake with Miami. They're facing a terrible Washington team, but I'd heard people talk up Mark Walton. Now, we've heard this before. But Kenny and Drake should see the majority of the snaps. And it's relatively cheap as well. Yeah, it sounds more like Mark Walton has surpassed Kalen Balage on the depth chart there. So he's not a huge concern to me from a Drake perspective. And this conversation would be kind of moot if we get either David Johnson or Todd Gurley out, because that would mean that Damian or that uh, uh, that we'd be getting Chase Edmonds at fifty two hundred dollars in a great spot. I would adore him if there's no David Johnson. I'd like Malcolm Brown if there were no Todd Gurley. So keep those guys in mind as value plays if their respective top running backs are out. But Kenyon Drake, I think, is in play kind of no matter what, because like Damian Williams, he gets work in the passing game. He has six, six and five targets over the past three games. And he's also been getting some increased rushing down work, especially with Kalen Balaj being just abhorrent overall uh, so far this year. I don't care as much about the ground usage, but the targets are really good. We've seen Drake play at least half the snaps in each game so far. And I think that if you're ever going to use pieces of this Miami offense, it should be this weekend against Washington because that defense is atrocious and they're coming off a bye. They're at home. A lot of things lining up for Miami. So guys like Preston Williams and Josh Rosen are on play, but so is Kenyon Drake at $5,600. Again, I would, I would not go here if I had a guy like Chase Edmonds at my disposal. But I think if David Johnson does play, then Kenyon Drake becomes my favorite running back who has a salary below $6,000. Under six grand for Kenyon Drake makes him well worth putting in our lineups in a game that Miami should stay competitive in. And if that's the case, they'll hand the ball off to Kenyon Drake this week, more so than they had at all this season. Could be a good Kenyon Drake game as we have all been waiting for and waiting for and waiting for. Let's move on to the wide receivers, Jim, and that brings us to Calvin Ridley of the Falcons. I've said a lot that I think this Falcons team is in trouble, and this may be Dan Quinn's last season. And some of that's because they're not getting the ball to Calvin Ridley enough. This week, though, the matchup does not get any better. Yeah, this is a really good spot for Calvin Ridley, and I still think that he has a scary floor. As we have seen at times this year, he sometimes gets phased out of this game because, like, they've got Julio Jones, got Austin Hooper, Devontae Freeman gets worked. So there are a lot of mouths to feed. So Calvin Ridley is a volatile asset, but his odds of hitting his ceiling and hitting the high end of that volatility are going to be higher this week than they'll be any week the entire year because they're facing a pace-up team that has a terrible secondary, which is great for Calvin Ridley. And the overall target usage for Calvin Ridley has not been good, but he's getting a ton of looks down the field. He actually has 11 deep targets so far this year, which is targets at least 16 yards downfield. That's actually more than DeAndre Hopkins has this year. So Calvin Ridley getting a lot of looks downfield and the odds that he cashes in on those deep looks are higher when he's facing the Cardinals than pretty much any other team in football right now. He is $5,500. He's kind of like Williams, where he gets you access to a really fun game for not a high salary. So Calvin Ridley does come with risk, and I want to emphasize that. But sometimes risk can be worth it when the ceiling is quite high. We said the same thing with Will Fuller last week. We now get Calvin Ridley, and I would say a pretty similar spot at $5,500. So if you were in on Ridley or Fuller last week, I think that that same thought process should lead you to Ridley this week. I'm not saying expect 45 points out of Calvin Ridley, but I think the odds he, hit is, he hits the ceiling here are high enough to justify investment despite the low floor. Sometimes the risk has to be worth the reward, and we've seen what Calvin Ridley could do. He has Matt Ryan's trust inside that red zone and even longer outside of the red zone where Calvin Ridley can find a way to score. I like Calvin Ridley a lot this week because, as I said, that matchup does not get any better. Let's take the risk, especially at this price. One more wide receiver to get to, Jim, and that brings us to Jamison Crowder. We mentioned before, with Sam Darnold coming back, all of these weapons kind of make sense. I named Crowder because the last time these guys uh, teamed up in week one, the dude had like 15 catches. That's pretty good. We'll take it. Yeah, and you weren't even exaggerating. He actually had 17 targets in that game. Like 15 catches should be an exaggeration, but it really wasn't by all that much, which is super interesting here for Jamison Crowder. Probably not going to get worked down the field, but I don't really need that when your salary is $5,400. Robbie Anderson is 53. I think that he is very intriguing too, because in that game, he saw coverage from Tredavious White. And he will see some Byron Jones here. And Byron Jones is one of the few guys who can uh, match up physically with Robbie Anderson from a speed perspective. That's why I want to go with Crowder here over Anderson at $5,300. Crowder, $5,400. That target volume is very good. I would expect this game to be pretty high scoring. And 
Jerron Allison did have a decent amount of success in the slot last week versus the Cowboys defense as well. So I think that Crowder makes sense at 54. I think, like you said, Demarius Thomas is not totally off the map. He is $4,800. So this Jets team in general is a pretty good place to go as they square off with the Cowboys. I'm not saying the Cowboys are a defense we must target, but it's just that the, the Jets are undervalued relative to where they should be now that Sam Darnold is back. I think that Crowder is my favorite wide receiver to go at here. Overall, Le'Veon Bell is my favorite piece in this Jets offense, but I think that Crowder gets a slight edge over Anderson because the matchup should be easier. And like you said, that volume was very much there. So Jameson Crowder, $5,400 gets you access to a better floor than you usually get in that range. He doesn't cost nearly anything. And for a player that had 15 receptions in week one, those 17 targets that you mentioned, we'll take them against Dallas. I think the floor is just safer for a guy like Crowder over Robbie Anderson, as you suggested as well. And I think pairing him up with Sam Darnold, it's very, very sneaky. And in tournaments, you got to be sneaky if you want to cash in. One last player to get to. That's the tight end position here, Jim. And I was looking at Vernon Davis on my weekly waiver wire here this week because my tight end has a buy. It's Darren Waller. So I wanted to pick up Vernon Davis, but I'm concerned he hasn't come back yet from that concussion. Sure, he got in a limited practice on Wednesday, but it doesn't mean he'll be cleared full go for Sunday. What do we do? The luxury of DFS, we don't have to decide until Sunday. Season long, it's a bit different because you do kind of have to make those decisions earlier on. But for DFS, we can wait all the way up until Sunday morning. And if Vernon Davis does get cleared by then, we are ready to rock. If he does not get cleared, the value options at tight end are pretty grim. I'm probably going to be spending up at tight end most often, even if we do get Vernon Davis here, because I think that it just does make more sense this week. But if Vernon Davis does play, he is $4,800 in the best matchup he is going to have all year. And we did see him get seven targets back in week one. He'll probably play a huge number of snaps. And Case Keenum is the quarterback for Washington, it looks like, in this game. And Keenum, we can make jokes about him. He makes a lot of mistakes, but he's also willing to throw the ball deep. And he does have a little bit of upside, as he showed back in weeks one and week two. I think that's pretty intriguing for Case Keenum and Washington against this Miami defense. So I think it's actually kind of a quarterback upgrade with them going back to Case Keenum as counter logical as it may actually be. So if Vernon Davis clears concussion protocol by Sunday at $4,800, he makes a lot of sense. If he does not clear concussion protocol, I think I'd rather just pay up. And again, I'll probably be paying up more often than not anyway, but uh, he's a value option at $4,800 facing a putrid defense and a Washington offense that I would expect to be able to move the football this week. So Vernon Davis, if he gets cleared at 48, I think makes a lot of sense. If not, I'm probably going to spend up a tight end more often than not. We'll just keep an eye on Vernon Davis for DFS. Of course, you don't have to make that decision, as Jim said, until Sunday morning. Vernon Davis isn't available. Looking around the league. I'm paying off a tight end as well. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry Up. Jim, it's been a blast. I appreciate the time, sir. Absolutely, Greg. Enjoy the football on Sunday and enjoy the baseball this weekend and today as well. We'll talk to you again next week. And hopefully by then, the Yankees have once again won a few more games. Have a great week, Jim. Tomorrow, Gabe Marantz will join me to go over his best bets. Have a great night. Enjoy Thursday Night Football. We'll see you tomorrow.